Hello guys, welcome back to another video, a different one today. We are going to be working on the BMW 1 Series. It's been a while since I worked on this car last. So as you guys know, this is a 2005 BMW 130i. So it has the 3 litre naturally aspirated N52 engine. And to be honest, this car has been pretty much trouble free over the past year or so. But today we're just going to be giving it a service. So we have quite a few items over here. So of course, oil, oil filter, cabin filter. We're going to be cleaning out the air filter as well. It has a KNN lifetime filter. So we're just going to be giving that a good clean out. Did give it a clean out not too long ago. Um, but yeah, may as well do it while we are doing a full service today. We're also going to be checking the uh, power steering fluid. So CHF fluid here. We're just going to be topping up the screen wash, checking the coolant as well, of course, and then anything else that needs doing will, of course, attend to it. Before we get started, though, if you could do me a massive favour and give this video a thumbs up, it really does help me out and it's greatly appreciated. Now then, as you can see, the car is already up in the air. It is on some uh, ramps at the front and I actually have quite a few people asking where I got these ramps from. They are called Rhino ramps. They are very, very good. I'm pretty sure they are spec to hold like, I think six ton across the two. So, you know, you're not gonna get a car that is gonna be heavy, too heavy to uh, use these ramps. And if you do wanna pick up a pair of these, then there will be a link down in the description box below along with any of the other tools that I'm going to be using again today, like the jack, the socket set, torque wrenches. These as well, these are very, very useful. So this is to remove the uh, oil filter cap. This is for an N52 engine, of course. I believe this one is for an N47 2 litre diesel filter cap. Obviously, it's too uh, small for that. So I have used this one in the past. It just makes your life so much easier using one of these. Of course, you can use one of those belt tools. You can use, you know, one of those claw tools, which I have used in the past, but these make your life so much easier. It's a lot easier to talk things up as well. Of course, simple little um, quarter inch socket set there. Drain pan. I would highly recommend getting one of these. It makes your life so much easier and it saves a lot of mess. But yeah, like I said, any of the oils, the fluids that I'm using today will all be down in the description box below. So first thing we're gonna do then is drain the oil. Now I have left the engine running for about 15, 20 minutes or so, just so the oil is nice and warm. It's just gonna help drain things a whole lot easier. So if we go underneath the car, position the drain pan, underneath the drain plug which is right there and now we can switch the engine off release that drain plug and then start draining the oil take the keys out so there's no possibility that this engine can be started until we have oil back in the thing. From memory, I want to say it's a 15, 16 or 17 mil socket. So I'll take all three. Start with the smaller first, the 15. Nope. 16. Nope. Must be a 17. Make sure our drain pan is in position and bombs away. And now what we can do is crack the oil filter cap loose. Just lift it up slightly. Let the oil drain. And we can lift it up and away. Let the filter remove from the cap. As you can see, the uh, filter cage has came off with the filter. Do not throw this away, remove this from the filter. You need to keep this, it's very, very vital to have this in place, as well as you'll uh, lose oil pressure. There you go, put that back in the cap. But yeah, filter still looks to be in one piece. Very, very hot though. Can't see any major chunks in it, which is always a good thing. 
but I believe this was a man filter. I just like to wipe out any of the old oil inside of the oil filter housing as well. I'll just give that a little bit of a clean out. Okay, and so as you can see, gave the oil filter housing a bit of a wipe out. It's nice and clean now, and we can get the oil filter ready for reinstallation and also the oil drain plug as well. So when it comes to the oil filter housing cap itself, there is two O-rings that need to be replaced. This larger one here and then this tiny one, this tiny green one here at the bottom. Let's get them both removed with a pick tool. There's one. This one at the bottom can be a bit tricky. This came off nicely. But now what I'll do is I'll give this a quick clean out with some brake cleaner and then we can reinstall the new filter. There we are then, all now perfectly clean. Take our new filter out. This just pushes into place. There you go, should hear it click. And then we should have three seals in here, so of course the larger o-ring, the small o-ring and then a crush washer as well for the drain plug. So we'll install the small green o-ring first but I'll just give it a quick drop of oil just so it doesn't bind when it's sealing and we'll slide this on, there we are. We'll do the same with the large o-ring as well. And we'll drop this into place. Make sure it is in the correct groove. It is the second groove there, not the top one. If you put it in that, you'll end up having an oil leak. Make sure it is in the correct one. Now, before we reinstall the oil filter to the oil filter housing, I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil in here. It's probably not needed. I mean, it only takes a second or two to build up oil pressure. Um, but it's always good practice to do so anyway. That will do. I'm going to drop this into place. And screw it down. And it can be torqued down to 25 newton meters. There we are. And we can get our oil drain plug. Of course, remove the old crush washer. Give the plug a bit of a clean. And then get the new crush washer, drop it into place, and this can be reinstalled then. And again, this can be torqued down to 25 newton meters. There we are. Now then we will begin refilling. Now this N52 engine should hold around 6.5 litres. I have a jug here with 5 litres in so I'm going to put the entire contents of that in. Then I'm going to go in the car and check the level sensor just to make sure it says that the engine is fine to start. If it's not I'll probably add a little bit more and then I will fire the engine up. Yeah. Okay, so pretty confident I have around five and a half, six litres in the system now. So we shouldn't be far off. Let's see what the level indicator is telling us. So ignition on. Okay, so it just says okay and I guess you kind of just have to trust that. It's one of the downfalls of not having a physical dipstick. So, yeah, let's go ahead and fire up the engine. The 
first of all, engine sounds fine. Just make sure we don't have any leaks. Pretty sure we're going to have to add another half a litre, another litre maybe, um, but obviously we'll do that at the end. Once the car is back on the ground, we'll get it up to temperature and do a proper reading then. But let's crack on with the rest of the service. So I said I am going to clean the air filter. So we just need to get the top of the air box removed. It is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I believe T30 screws to get the top of that off. No, T25. Yeah, there is the KNN air filter itself. Doesn't look too bad to be honest. No pile of leaves at the bottom, which is good. We'll slide it out. There we are. Okay, so a quick look at the air filter itself. A few Small bits of debris in here, but nothing that can't be vacuumed out. Inside of it is perfectly clean, as you would expect. So yeah, I think we'll just get away with giving us a quick vacuum, to be honest. Okay, there we go then. Give it a good vacuum out. No dirt or debris in here whatsoever now. Looking good. I'm just going to give the air box a bit of a wipe out just to get any dust out of it. There's the air box all now nice and clean. So we'll drop the KNN filter back in. Air clicks into place. And then reinstall the top of the air box. There we go then, that's the air filter done. And now we'll move on to the cabin filter. And this is probably the easiest filter to swap out in the entire car. There's no excuse for not swapping this out. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six, eight millimeter screws, eight millimeter heads, not eight millimeter thread diameter. But I only actually have three holding this in. I guess they kind of got lost somewhere down the line, but we'll remove the remaining three anyway. Have an air filter box can be removed. Just retrieve those screws. And let's have a look at what the filter's looking like. Yeah, pretty, pretty blocked up to be honest. Plenty of pollen in here. That's definitely doing its job. The fact that it's grey, it's supposed to be grey, that's how it comes brand new, it's a charcoal filter. Um, but if obviously you have a white uh, cabin filter and it's looking like this and it's more than likely been in there for years. But yeah, this was I think swapped last year I believe, 2021. Yeah, to pop it out, just pop these two tabs, or three tabs rather, and it pulls out. Yeah, this was a Bosch cabin air filter that I installed last time. Now we have a Marley cabin air filter. This is supposed to be the top of the line one. It is a cabin filter with S5 broadband technology. Like what the hell is that? Um, but it's supposed to be not only a charcoal filter, but antibacterial as well. I don't know, we'll just wait and see. We'll get it out of the box and take a look. Okay, so it's kind of I guess charcoal on one side and then blue on the other side. Interesting. It's pretty easy to determine which way it goes round. Obviously your clips have to line up with the 
clips on the uh, filter box. We do have a couple of arrows as well that indicates airflow. So if you have to imagine, this will be down like this. The air is going to go through here into the box and then into the cabin just there. So yeah, just drop it into place. I'm just going to give the bottom off here a bit of a wipe over as well. A bit dusty in there. You don't want that going straight into the new filter. Let's drop the cabin air filter box in place then. Secure with our screws. I'm going to see if I have any spare screws that I can install in the missing holes. Let's see if these will do the trick. Oh no, way too small diameter. I'm going to have to get some new screws for this. Okay then, so with the cabin air filter now replaced, what's left? So I guess we can check the power steering fluid, the coolant level, and also the screen wash. I'm pretty sure that does need a top up. Okay, first of all, power steering fluid. Pretty sure this will be fine. I don't have any leaks. And I have already done a flush with this. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Coolant level. I'm hoping this is not below the minimum because we was chasing a leak for the best part of two years, which pretty sure we fixed eventually. Now that's bang on the max, which is good. And it's just the screen wash. Do. And with that now done, let's get the car back on the ground, get the engine up to temperature, check the oil level, and then we can wrap this job up then. Okay, so I had the engine running for a little while now. Just gonna check what the level sensor is telling us. Okay, so that's like a quarter over the minimum. So I think we need to add about three quarters of a litre. It's usually around a litre between the minimum and the maximum. So I'm going to add 750 millilitres and we should be bang on the maximum then. That should be bang on three quarters of a litre gone in then. Okay, so with everything now done, I'm just going to reset the service indicator. So of course, hold down the uh, trip odometer button here until you get to the service menu and then we'll just scroll through so oil we want to reset that reset yes there we go I don't think there's one for cabin filter like I said No, uh, no, that is the cabin filter, isn't it? So we will reset this one as well. Oh, it's already at the max reset, so no need to worry about that. Brake fluids, yeah, we done that like a couple of months ago when we rebuilt all the calipers. Everything else is pretty much fine. Also filled out the service history as well. I was actually surprised at how long it, it has been since I 
uh, you know, last changed the oil. It was only like nine months ago, but it is actually nearly 8,000 miles ago, which is actually uh, a little bit too long for my liking. I like to do it every five or 6,000 miles. You can see like the previous three times before that, I've changed it like every uh, two to 3,000 miles. So yeah, gonna make sure we do this um, around 145,000 miles. Um, for the next one. Let's see actually how many uh, service intervals we have left in this book. Uh, we have a good few, so we should be fine. I probably will be actually taking this car off of the road um, at some point over the next year or so. I want to do like a complete uh, interior change. I want to have uh, do like an iDrive retrofit. Um, so the center console and everything's got to be changed and uh, maybe swapping out the seats as well. I'm not too sure yet, um, but a lot of uh, plans coming for this car in the near future. Okay then guys, so there we go. Uh, the BMW 1 Series has had its annual service. Like I said, I did stretch it a little bit further than what I anticipated. I didn't realize I've done that many miles in the car in the past year or so. Um, I guess it kind of has been my daily driver along with the BMW 760 Ally. So I've done, like I said, about 8,000 miles in the past nine months or so. Um, like I said, I probably won't be doing a whole lot over the next year because I'm going to be taking the car off the road at some point to do everything that I've mentioned. Also plan on doing like a full um, underbody restoration as well. So yeah, we're going to be taking things back to the bare metal, making sure there's no rust and yeah, just refurbishing everything underneath basically. Um, and I want to have plans to uh, get the car in for a full respray at some point as well. but. All that to come. The car's been very reliable to me. I've done a bunch of uh, preventative maintenance, um, you know, pretty much straight after I bought the car. So it hasn't broke down on me. It's, you know, been pretty much flawless. Um, but let me know, do you want to see more videos on this car? I'm sure there'll be things that I can do uh, in the meantime before I get onto the much uh, bigger task. But, you know, I'm all ears at this point. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and, you know, break my car just for the sake of making content. Um, but, you know, if you guys want me to see, you know, if you guys want to see me uh, doing small modifications um, and doing little uh, preventive maintenance jobs, then please uh, do let me know. But yeah, I think that's about it. To be honest, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you have not already done so. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.